So let's get started. My theme is Reliable Log Aggregation System in Multi Tenant Kubernetes Cluster. Let me introduce myself. I am Sakamoto Hiroki. I joined LINE in January 2021, and since then, I have been SRE for Velder, the private cloud. My mission is trying to improve and secure the reliability of the system. I am also interested in Kubernetes and distributed systems, so I try to deal with these systems as well. So before getting the main topic, let me get, give you the background. First, what is Velda? Velda is LINE's homegrown private cloud platform. It offers different services, include, including OpenStack-based IaaS, Rancher-based Kubernetes as a service, MySQL or Elasticsearch, which is a managed DB services, and also Knative-based FARS and LB and NAT network services as well. So this is a scale of Verda. There are 74,000 virtual machines, 30,000 physical machines, and 4,000 hypervisors. Velder SRT, SRE team is cross-functionally dealing with Velda. This SRE team has two units, platform-wide SRE and infrastructure management team. Platform-wide SRE unit is developing and operating the platform to improve reliability and reduce operational burden on service developers. On the other hand, infrastructure management unit is procuring and managing and building the physical infrastructure resources in Velda, trying to better use resources. Today, my topic covers platform-wide SRE. And the main theme is log aggregation in Velda. These include Velda service application logs and audit log aggregation for audit that are referred by Velder service developers on everyday basis. The target audience is those who face the similar issues in similar configurations or those who are thinking about multi-tenant architectures, also those who make decisions about system architecture. Theme includes configuration management and examples in multi-tenant Kubernetes and load collection operation for Hulent D in multi-tenant Kubernetes. So what is the benefit of this session? You get the useful idea to address the config management in multi-tenant Kubernetes and possible pain points before release. Especially the configuration management, I will explain solutions using Kubernetes operator. This is useful if multiple teams use configuration information under multi-tenant environment. It is not just about logs, so I hope this will help your work. So first of all, what were the issues about logging in Valda? Let me explain. Currently, many of Velda services are running on multi-tenant Kubernetes cluster. There are three main purposes to offer multi-tenant cluster. Number one is aggregate infrastructure resources. Number two 
is trying to standardize operation like deployment and monitoring. Number three is close functionally improving reliability and operation cost by developing internal platform on Kubernetes. The cluster is operated jointly by Kubernetes as a service and SRE team. I hope our solution will help those operating multi tenant clusters. How has log aggregated before? Originally, each value service pod, we deploy FluentD and log rotated as sidecar. And we were using Kubernetes MPTD directory and trying to share the log files amongst containers. For instance, IRS component, OpenStack Nova API component, Output log file in empty directory. FluentD in the same pod always monitor and tail logs. That it sent to Elasticsearch used as log storage in Velda. Then log outputted in empty directory is rotated by log rotated under certain condition. So what was the issue? There are three issues. Number one is the number of the containers per pod is too many. Number two is older developers, regardless of the knowledge level, they always have to maintain fluent D. Number three is monitoring and capacity management as well as performance management and also the reliability and data persistency were not consistent. So those are the issues. Because of that, let's say one pod is too big in size, so that's why it's not possible or it's difficult to schedule efficiently to the code. This is against one of the objectives of multi-tenant cluster. It is not improving infrastructure resource aggregations. And also, depending on the maintenance team, the quality of logging by FluentD is varying. Also, audit log was aggregated in the same way in Velda, but Different teams has different objective of the persistency and also monitoring. So audit log is not going to work as an audit objective. Audit log records who does what, and you always have to go back and check. But because it was not sufficient monitoring, so if the log is gone or not, you may not know. And also missing those information itself is quite a serious problem. Because of those issues, we decided to rethink log aggregation mechanism. Again, these challenges, what was our solution? So let me go into that topic. There are two solutions which we implemented. Number one is to provide managed Fluent cluster. And the second is introducing Fluent D configuration operator, which validate Fluent D config automatically. First, let me talk about the managed Fluent D cluster. So this is the configuration to offer the managed FluentD cluster. So FluentD is separated from sidecar, and log is outputted to the standard output. So what is managed is the FluentD forwarder and aggregator. FluentD 
is deployed with these two roles. First, what is forwarder? Forwarder collects logs and sends it to the aggregator. It is deployed as daemon set, so each node always has one FluentD forwarder pod. With this format, if you are deploying FluentD in this format, I am sure that there are many of you who have the same format. s What is aggregator? Aggregator receives logs from the forwarder, do the processing and filtering, and send that results to the log data store. It's using persistent volume, so it is deployed as stateful set. There are three benefits in splitting aggregator and forwarders. Number one is daemon set forwarder does not need resources. Forwarder is just sending the logs to the aggregator, so it can be quite light. The second is we can improve the scalability. Processing or transferring tend to be quite high load. But by splitting the roles, aggregator can scale horizontally to reduce the load or distribute the load. The third is change can be minimal. Logging is basically a standard output, so there is not a large change. However, processing and transmitting may change frequently. In the future. So, all the nodes to change to FluentD is inefficient and it can be risky. So, by splitting the roles, we can minimize the change, and that is quite a big benefit. So, let's see how the log is flowing. First, pod output logs to the standard output. Standard output of container is outputted to JSON log file on host by Docker log as long as FluentD pod bound the host side directory. Then each container standard output log can be aggregated. And forwarder sends the aggregated log to ag- forwarder sends the aggregated log to aggregator, and uh, we are conducting the load balancing so that we can distribute the load to aggregator. Once receiving log from the forwarder, it will process and filter and send to the Elastic Research. So Fluent D is fully shared amongst the clusters. Each developer does not have to deal with FluentD on their own. Also, this managed FluentD has various mechanisms so that it will not lose the data. On the forward side, pod is deployed onto the host and we buffer the logs onto the path so that we can be prepared for the aggregator side failures. Also, not to lose log when pod is rescheduled, process is rebooted by OOM killer, buffer is flashed at the time of shutdown, and the already read log position is recorded as file so that reading log can, be, can recover sooner. And also to make sure log is reached, ACK is requested to aggregator. If there is no ACK, it will retry. So on aggregator side, we actually buffer the log to the mounted persistent volume. So this way, uh, even though the Alexic search, the data store is failed, we can buffer logs without losing. And also, 
by rescheduling pod, we try to make sure that we flush the logs at the time of process completion. But uh, uh, we also are trying to distribute so that one node failure will not down the multiple aggregator. This is a summary. On this uh, managed FluentD cluster, we have several benefits. The validator service developer does not have to maintain FluentD, and aggregator and data store failures will not lead to the system down. We have enough buffer, and also the aggregator scal scaling is easy. Well, this is fully monitored by SRE team, so data persistency, reliability, and performance are fully managed by SRE. So how do developers apply their own logging configuration? So now, let me talk about the FluentD config operator, which we implemented next. Let's suppose multiple teams apply their log settings to managed FluentD cluster. One team is trying to set, apply the settings, and if the other team try to apply at the same time, it can conflict. And if one team try to apply invalid setting, then FluentD process is broken and lead to the downtime. Of course, that impacts the other teams sharing the same FluentD. Let me summarize the problems. Multiple team try to apply the settings to the managed Fluent D, then it can produce the conflict amongst the teams, and also invalid configuration will lead to the system down. And of course, we have to be aware that Fluent D process is fully considered when you are trying to apply the settings. So that's why we try to offer this solution to meet these things. One is all. All configurations should be validated before applying. All configurations should affect other teams' configuration. All configurations shouldn't cause process down. And it can apply the configuration without directly operating FluentD. So we developed FluentD config operator. This is provided as Kubernetes custom resource and also operator. And this time, it's a FluentD log-related operator. But if you are using configuration under multi-tenant, you can use this method. This FluentD config operator automatically validate config written in custom resource, automatically compile the FluentD config to config map. And if there is a change in the config map, then it will notify FluentD. Also, when the setting validation is failed, then it will block the config. Let's take a look at the actual process of applying the settings. First of all, the SRE specifies the Fluent D to be applied by custom resources. This will make Fluent D the target of operators monitoring. The border service developer then applies the CRD and logging pipeline with their own logging configuration. For logging pipeline custom resources, you have to record where you get logs, how you process logs, and where you store them. Then operator detect the change and start reconciliation. First, based on the contents of the custom resources, we convert it into a FluentD config and generate a config map for validation. Next, we launch a validation pod with a config map mounted on it. Here, you can validate either by running FluentD dry run or by actually running the process to see if it is ready. 
After successful validation, the operator compiles the custom resources into the Fluent D configuration and merges it into the config map prepared for the forwarder and aggregator. When the config map is updated, the operator notifies Fluent D. In this example, we check for updates at regular intervals and notify Fluent D to avoid frequent notification when config is changed continuously. This means that all the developer have to do to apply their configurations is to write it in CR and apply it. Now that you have an overview, let's take a look at the more detailed parts. First, let's look at the details of the custom resources. The logging pipeline resource specifies the source of the logs and supports three types. The first is standard output, and empty directory. Berda outputs the audit log to the empty directory and the application log to the standard output. Therefore, we needed a way to read the log files placed in the empty directory. The empty directory is usually not visible outside of the mounted pod but it can be viewed from the host where the pod is scheduled. Our FluentD forwarder mounts the directory corresponding to the empty directory on the host side so that we can retrieve it. And finally, custom snippets are supported. This is supported to specify the logs stored on the host path. The next section describes the compilation of the configuration. The operator compiles the FluentD config based on the logging pipeline resource. During the compilation, important parameters are automatically added and the buffer storage location is converted to a form that is convenient for the operator and developer. As an example, Let's look at the configuration that takes the logs spooled into empty directory, processes them, and send them to Elasticsearch. First of all, the source of the log is specified as the name of the entry directory and the file name of the log, which is used to compile the config for forwarder. The path in the empty directory is converted to a path that can be seen from the host side. You can also set the file to record the location of logs that have already been read and other important settings automatically. The next step is to compile the processing and destination specification as a config for the aggregator. Processing and destination settings are always wrapped with a label tag since they can accidentally affect the settings of other teams. A single logging pipeline setting is always spit out in a single label. This way, the settings of a given logging pipeline will always affect only the logging pipeline resources. Then, complete the pass so that the buffer file is always saved in the persistent volume of the aggregator. Thus, the compile process generates a config for each forwarder and aggregator, wraps it with a label tag, automatically completes important settings, and converts it so that a buffer and position files are stored in the desired location. Next, let's take a look at the validation process. 
In addition to doing some static analysis before actually running the pod, we basically run the pod through dry run to validate it. However, for things such as sending settings to the elastic search, where problems do not become apparent until they are actually run and communicated with, we try to verify them by actually running them instead of dry running them. This is a brief description of the solution we provided to solve the problem. Next, I would like to talk about load testing and monitoring. Because of the large scale of the logs that Birda handles, we needed to verify that our solution would work in a real world environment. So we did a dark launch first and tested it under production load. We haven't changed the Fluent D environment as sidecar container. We newly added managed Fluent D cluster and sent logs. In the production environment, the load is actually about 250 gigabyte per day, we were able to visualize and solve the problems caused by the high load at this time and achieve a safe release. Here, I would like to introduce one of the issues we face in a typical high load environment. The CPU utilization of the aggregator node became randomly overloaded and then quickly return to normal. In addition, when the load was high, the forwarder could not even return ACK to the forwarder, and the forwarder kept retrying to send the log again and again. An aggregator had enough instances to keep the CPU usage low on a regular basis. So we steadily looked at which threads on FluentD were under heavy load. In FluentD, a thread called event thread receives requests, write them to a buffer, and returns ACK. We found out that this event thread was under heavy load. When we monitored TCP connections, we found that even under heavy load, there were not the large number of forwarders connecting to aggregator. This means that single log transmission is heavy on one of the following flows. Request reception, buffer writing, and ACK. However, since the I.O. load is low and there is no heavy processing, we guessed that it took a long time to process the log because the size of the log sent at one time was too large. Therefore, we decided to reduce the size of the log and then set it in smaller pieces to make it easier to process. We were able to solve the problem successfully. If the log is huge and each request takes a long time, scale out will not improve the performance, but if the number of small Lightly processed request increases, scale out will improve the performance, so we decided that this measure is reasonable. Now, moving on to the next example of how we are monitoring. Prometheus is installed in the same cluster and monitors Fluent D and operator metrics and remotely writes metrics to Victoria metrics which is commonly used in Birda. Then using VM alert, a plugin of a Victoria matrix, it periodically queries the alert rules and notifies alert manager when a match is found. If a match is found, the alert is sent to the alert manager, which in turn sends an alert to Slack. In addition, Prometheus itself is monitored by another Prometheus. So when Prometheus in a cluster goes down, we can 
detected immediately. The metrics we are monitoring include CPU and memory usage, process down, part down, and restart count, whether FluentD is sending logs properly, whether the processing speed is faster than the log generation speed, the amount of disk space used to use for buffering, and the number of errors, and the number of errors is also checked. In particular, the flow rate of the log is monitored regularly. An appropriate tuning is done to prevent the log from getting stuck in the buffer. If the log processing speed is not fast enough, then buffering will be required for a long time due to the downtime of the destination. And even after the recovery, the buffer will not be cleared easily and the log transmission will be delayed for a certain period of time. In the end, I will explain the result of this project and the challenges that we have emerged since it's released. By implementing the two solutions, Verda's service developers were completely freed from Fluent D maintenance, as originally planned and could safely apply their own log settings by simply writing them in the logging pipeline resource. The reliability of the log aggregation, data persistence, and performance aspects were taken care of by the SRE to improve quality. In addition to this, we were able to reduce the number of containers by about 172 per cluster, thus improving scheduling efficiently. However, after the release, we encountered some problems. First of all, Docker's JSON log driver is designed to automatically split and send logs of 16K or more. Therefore, for example, in a case where JSON logs are output, a broken JSON log will be delivered to FluentD and will be discarded as an error during a parse. To deal with this problem, we have a policy that if a log is more than 16 kilobytes per line, we will ask the application to reduce the output contents or split it appropriately. Also, if the user's login pipeline setting is wrong and a parse error occurs, the log itself will be discarded, although the Fluent D process will not be affected. This is not detected by the config operator validation process, so there's no way for users to detect the error themselves. The current solution is for the SRE to detect the error and communicate it to the user. But this increases the burden on the SRE, so we are thinking of providing an error handling configuration. For example, you can define a destination for logging pipeline custom resources in this way. Then, in the at error label, which is a mechanism of uh, FluentD uh, dead letter routing, the destination setting for each login pipeline CR will be automatically inserted. In this way, it is possible to keep the logs that have failed without being thrown away. Also, since the flow rate of logs to this destination can be output from Prometheus matrix, it is possible to automatically notify users when logs flow to this error destination. In this way, we are considering a system that will allow us to immediately notify users of parse errors without losing any logs. In the future, we are planning to improve the architecture using Kafka. The forwarder will send logs to Kafka, and the aggregator will receive logs from Kafka. We have a managed Kafka system 
that is running at a very high service level, so we will make use of it. This removes the direct dependency between aggregator and forwarder, allowing for more flexible scaling and also allows the forwarder to transfer buffer responsibilities to Kafka instead of buffering on its own node in the event of aggregator failure. In addition, in the event of the aggregator failure, forwarder can transfer buffer responsibilities to Kafka instead of buffering on its own nodes. Also, this is the most important point. You can send the logs from outside the cluster to take advantage of aggregator resource. The log flow rate of the multi-tenant cluster is only about one-tenth of the total log flow rate of Birder. Therefore, it is important to be able to send logs from outside the cluster in order to standardize logging for broader scope in the future. So by doing so, we plan to standardize log aggregation for all workloads of the Birder service, including processes running in VMs and NPMs, not just this Kubernetes cluster, such as masking personal information and organizing log destination data stores according to the importance of the logs. We plan to standardize log aggregation for all workload of the Birder service, including processing running in BMs and NPMs, not just this Kubernetes cluster. Thank you very much for your attention.